people are saying, rah, so are you related to, you understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So off the strength for that now, I know I can go to certain people and be like, yo, I need X, Y, and Z. We must have ended up with a 4-4, four, four, some uh, Magnum 4-4, four, four, yeah. How old are you then? About the same age, like 13. But I've got my head down, so he's like, where? So I'm saying, where? And he's like, there? I'm like, oh, shut up, man. Stop chatting shit, man. This was in like the space of like five seconds. So then as I've looked up now, there's like 10 men in front of me. Ballied up, guns in my face, like, yo, back up. But I thought it was my young bucks. I thought it was my brethren's. And that's when the man's ran up behind me. And then this one, I caught in my back here, put the thing to my back and then gone bang. But where it's like a high powered nine, high powered nine millimeter, like the force of it has threw me to the ground. It's like panicking, trying to start the whip, but it's not starting. He's just like, no, 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 Secretly, I'm looking at him like, bro, start this whip because I don't want to have to kill you. The book him in. The woman's gone to me. She's gone, are you on bail for murder? So I'm like, no, it's only in attempts. She's gone, only in attempts. She started getting mad. Then she's looked at my mom what arrested me. Said, have you heard him? Only in attempts. So then he's like, no, 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 no. So I just gone, boom. You get me? That's when the windows were shut. Like, tsh. Yes, guys. So it's Rebels, and I'm back with another episode of the DMC podcast. Now, today we've got a guest that me and him have actually been speaking for a little while now. Probably like what a month we've been planning yeah, this yeah, episode yeah. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, would you like to introduce yourself anyway to everyone that's there? Yeah, I'm Kieran Proverbs on Instagram, K the PT19, and also on um, True Blue Lifestyle on YouTube and True Blue Lifestyle on Instagram as well. So, who are you? Why are you? Explain, tell them. So, I'm Kieran Proverbs. I come out of jail um, last year. So, what I've been doing is telling my story on social media and everything else and, like, trying to steer the youths away from a life of crime. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. So, I found you on Made You Think. I think I saw him yeah. post a clip of you. Um, Not the interview thing. It was just, like, you talking in your room. I can't remember yeah, yeah, the exact yeah. clip. I've yeah. seen so much stuff from you. Um, so you're from Manchester originally? Yeah. Where in Manchester? The only place I know in Manchester, I think, is Mossad. I yeah, don't know yeah. anything else, fam. Yeah. I'll be honest to you. Yeah, now nah, we're from over the road, so literally across the road from uh, Mossad. What's the postcodes, is it? M16. Okay. So we're from we're from Old Trafford, but um, Mossad's just across the road. Okay, fair enough. Is there like, are you like, was there links within the areas or was it like a, cause you know sometimes you can have one area here and another area yeah, there yeah, and yeah. there's that yeah. or you? Yeah, nah, because that, that's the point that I keep trying to put out there. Mm. But it's like, um, so the main gangs in Manchester was Gooch and Dodderton. Okay. You know what I mean? So one side of my side um, is Gooch and the other side's Dodderton. Right. But then we was from Old Trafford and you've got areas like Old Trafford, Fallowfield, Wally Range, all these kind of areas, but they're all affiliated to Gooch. Right. You know what I mean? But we was OT Crip. Okay. So that was um that was that was our thing. It's like um I even said it in one of my videos. It's um when we was coming up, so the oldest to us mm. was Gooch. Do you know what I mean? But then obviously some in house things are going on and whatever else. So then I've turned around and decided to say, you know what? We need our own. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We need our own gang, we need our own name, we need our own image. Do you know what I'm saying? So at the time I was listening to certain artists and watching um Stanley Tucky Williams, I don't know if you know him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I watched his film Redemption. So now I'm hearing about this Crip thing. So I'm thinking, right, Crip, like, what's that? Do you understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. off the strength for that now, that's when I started saying like, Ra, I'm OT Crip. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And then it just kinda caught on. At first, that like, let's not get it twisted. At first, everyone was like, Nah, that's dead, that's dead, that's some American thing and you know, yeah. So it's just me on my own. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I was wearing the all blue fits. The uh, blue bandana, all these kind of things, and I was saying, "Right, I'm OT Crip," and it was back in the day. So, remember, when was uh, that? This was like oh five, okay, oh six. So, do you remember like back before all this Wi-Fi business was the Bluetooth thing? Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my Bluetooth name was Ra KPB OT Crip. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? And I'm getting all pictures off YouTube and then putting like little tags on it and all them kind of things and after a while it it started to catch on then other people are saying it and do you know what i mean so is it fair to say that back then you brought crypt to manchester like that yeah, whole 100%, type of thing 100 yeah. percent. okay fair enough that's new to me so i didn't actually know that there yeah, was yeah. crypts in because we got crypts in london shit. yeah 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 um 
is that still a thing in Manchester right now? Like, is there still people gripping or? You see, like, th- that's another thing I said the other day as well in one of my videos, yeah? Because I was having a conversation with someone mm. and they were saying to me, like, oh, I see such and such wearing this and such and such wearing that and rare tetes. But I'm saying to them, you need to understand, yeah? You see, in this day and age, it's more like a fashion thing. Yeah, definitely. Rather than a, a gang lifestyle, thing. Yeah. yeah, you understand Bro. what I'm saying? So it's like, to me, it's like if you see a man in his video with a blue bandana, it doesn't really mean what it meant back in the day. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because in money right now, there's not really no war. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you still have people that claim to be whatever they're from, but there's not really no active rivals. There's not really no beef. Do you mm. get what I'm saying? So to me, it's more like a fashion thing. Like even with me, certain times when I'm speaking, I might say certain things like, yeah, I love cuz or local. But you're not meaning the C for the C, you're just saying That's it on a casual thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's more like it's more like a habit. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm the same. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So it's more like a fashion thing and just a way of speaking now. Do you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm with you. So this is what, like 05, 06 times? Yeah. So just for not clarification, but just to understand. So how old would you have been around these times? How old are you now? I'm 31 now. So you're 31 now. 05, 05, so that's 15 years ago. Yeah, so I'd have been like 16. 15, 16. All right, cool. Is that where it all started from, would you say? Would you always like... You know, there's some kids that are just being bad from young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you just bad from young? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More time, yeah, yeah, yeah. For real? So even from primary school, you was that troublesome kid, nah, would you say? You know what it was, yeah? You see, like, in a school setting, mm. we weren't really bad. Do you know what I'm saying? It was like... Man used to keep up certain madness and that, but it weren't really like no violence or nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So right. as I've gone to like high school now, because like I said as well in another one of my stories, we started driving from like the age of 13. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We went out, bought a car, and then me and my two brethren are sat in the car and said, you know what? Man ain't going home until we learn how to drive. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. where... We're just sat in the whip. So me and my two bridges are just sat in the whip. So now it's like, I had an idea of how to drive, but I'd never actually done practice, it. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're doing it with stalling, all them kind of things. And then after that, we started driving. So now man started getting the hang of it and this and that. But we were just bombing around in first gear. Mm. So you could just imagine the car just madness, <laughs> making mad noises. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In first gear. Then one day, because after that, I become the designated driver. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I could handle the whip and that. So then one day, now my bridging was driving. So he's driving. We're going through an alleyway. So we had, we had like, upgraded now to second gear. Mm-hmm. So my man's in second gear. Yeah, my man's looked at me and gone, yo, you ready? So I'm saying, ready for what, G? My man's like, third gear. Banged it in third <laughs> gear, yeah? Bro, I won't lie to you. I jumped out the car. Yeah. I jumped out the whip. I just jumped out the passenger seat. Like, jump. Panic. Yeah, panic. Like, what? Wow, third gear, you're mad. Like, we ain't ready for that, bro. Like, <laughs> it's still like yeah. gear one. <laughs> like, man, man, we're on gear two now, but man ain't okay. ready for... We didn't have no conversation about third. You mm. understand what I'm saying? So I've just jumped out the whip. I started doing all the madness and wrapped up and went sliding across the floor. Then I wanted to get Vex at my man. Yeah. Like, yo, really bro, why, why, why are you going in third gear, bro? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But it was my own fault. And what, this 13 times? You're like 13. Now, yeah, about 13, 14 now. Uh, cool. Did you get kicked out of school? Yeah, we got dashed out of school. Because um, what it was for me, like, and this is another thing, yeah? It's like when we started driving and that, so mm. now we're getting recognised by the older man then. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now it turned into, rah, you, you kids are sick, you know? So man, they're like, rah, no, that's just us, you understand what I'm saying? But then um, after that now, now we start driving for them. Do you get what I mean? So my mum say, yo, give us a lift down the road. I need to go pick up my car or... Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so we're doing that for them. Then it then it turns into, yo, drop us here, park around the corner. Then the man them will come back with plasmas and mm-hmm. all them kind of things. Because back then in the days, it was more um like more like Robin type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that was the thing. Because like at this point, I like 13, 14, I went on no gang shit. Mm-hmm. I was more on like, say driving mischievous motorbike. type yeah. shit and then like street robberies and things like that mm. do you get what I'm saying but it weren't really no gang thing but we still had like access to certain things and that like, of course we must have fucking cause alright that's another point I want to make you yeah? you see back then when we was like 13 mm. our crew was called drive by crew okay you know what I'm saying cause we used to spit and whatever yeah mm. so then we was the butt of all jokes 
Like, right, you call yourself dry by crew, you ain't got no gun and rare tear tests. And I'm, again, my same brethren, what took the car in third. Yeah. He's saying to man, like, right, so me and him are sat there reasoning. I'm getting mad. I'm saying, right, these man want to chat shit. And you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then he's like, um, nah, I know what, no. We need to get a heat. We need to get a heat. So man, I'm saying, yeah, all right, we can get that. You get me, car. You see where, because I, I, when I was growing up, I lived in Moss Side. Then we moved from Moss Side to like Hume. And then from Hume, I moved to Old Trafford. Okay. So then all my friends from high school were from like Old Trafford, innit? So where I've moved to Old Trafford, my family was known in Old Trafford. So when yeah. I'm coming about and I'm saying, right, I'm Kieran and Proverbs, people are saying, right, so are you related to, you understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So off the strength for that now, I know I can go to certain people and be like, yo, I need X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? So I never forget. I must have went to someone and I said, "Raw, we need a thing. Mm-hmm. We must have ended up with a 4-4. So man, Magnum 4-4, yeah. How old are you then? About the same age, like 13. Okay. So what year would, would have been in about? 2001. Yeah. Nah, 13. Yeah, but you said you were 13, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, like, like 2002. Now, nah, 2002. Okay, fair enough. So then we would have been in about year nine, say. Yeah. Mm. So this is when man is saying like, raw drive by crew, no bullets, and you understand what I'm saying. So now we've got this thing now. So we're thinking, raw. I wish a man say something now. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so now man in school, me and my brethren are gone there. I've got the thing in like, you remember them night bags with the drawstring? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like like a JD bag. Yeah, 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 yeah that two. type shit. Yeah. yeah. So we've had one of them. My brethren's got the thing in the bag. So now we're chilling, waiting for a man to say something. Then someone said it, raw. Drive by crew, no bullets, no Dude. gun. Yeah. So man are looking like I How looked at live? him, he's <laughs> looked at me. My mum's just handing me the bag, open up the bag, said, Rah, what are you saying? Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mum's like, Rah. In school? Yeah, 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 yeah. Rah. On on the um school field. Okay. You know what I mean? So man's like, Rah, what are you saying? Rah, rah. So, oh, all right, all right. You understand what I'm saying? So then yeah. after that now it's like no one said nothing again. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so now now we've got our car. And we got the heat. Yeah. So if man really wanted to, we couldn't do a drive-by. But mm. we wasn't on that then. It was just more of a statement. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. more like ego and pride and bravado and them thing there. Mm-hmm. But then after that now, like I said, then we started driving around. The older man then was getting in the car and we're getting about and doing whatever. But at this point, it was still like just street robberies. It was more to fund our habits with cars and motorbikes and whatever else. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what it was really back then. And like I said, the music thing. Okay, oh. so you lot was doing that back then as well. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So at what point did you get kicked out? What I, did you get kicked out for? I must have got kicked out in like year 10. Okay. Year 10 I got kicked out. So same again around 04. 04. Yeah, because I, yeah, I would have left in like 05 in it. So 04 we got dashed out because... You see, for me, where we're living this lifestyle on road, mm. where we're looking up to these people, do you know what I'm saying? And these men are showing me love. So teachers can't tell me nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Teacher can't tell me shit. Mm. I've got the man them that are giving me weed and I'm driving up and down with these. But then you want to try to tell me about don't make noise in the class. And I started being unruly. Mm-hmm. So coming into class late and doing all them kind of things. So the thing I got kicked out for, no, the first time I got suspended, I've gone in the class late, stinking of weed and that. So the teacher's like, right, where you been? I'm like, shut up, man. You get me? Mm. Then the man's going, right, you think you're bad, you know? So I'm saying, what, you dickhead, I'll stab you up. Mm. You get me? But the teacher's writing on the board. She's just heard I'll stab you up. So she's like, oh, you, you threatened to stab me, right? Ta-ta. Teacher, she used to love doing that. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> she knows I weren't chatting to so, her. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. She just tried to... Tr- Put a bit of sauce on the thing, you get me? Definitely. And then kicked me out of the class, got suspended. And then after that, we just kept getting kicked out. And then they said we was too unruly for the class. So man used to get put in like the segregation. We used to call it withdrawal. Mm. You get me? Where it's just a little, little, a room as big as this. Okay. With like four chairs in, a little divide in the middle. And you have to sit there and do your work. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. So even in there, so now what was happening... All the man them was linking up in there. Yeah, so, so there's too many of us here. So 
I ended up getting dashed out of there and had to sit in the main office. Mm. So now I'm on it in the main office. They used to give us little idiot jobs to do and like letters, you know, letters when you're sending letters home, mm-hmm. give us them to print. Oh, yeah, I remember. But we started Ooh. ramping with them. We started ramping with them. So when man are putting them through the machine to get the stamp on, man are pulling them back out. Do you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So he's just got a line of ink on. Yeah. The teacher said, yeah, you know what? Forget this, man. Then, you know, like, um, we had this school called Manor High. Right. It was like, you know where, it's like, basically, it's like a breeding ground for jail. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So, they sent us there, but that was like different teachers' car keys are getting stolen and all them kind of things. And we just ended up getting dashed out after that. And then they ended up putting us on some course thing where we used to go on trips and all them kind of things and then dashed us out. What do you think, though? In terms of, like, you getting kicked out of school, do you think that had an effect on you today? Well, not today, obviously, because you're different to today than maybe, say, like, 10, 15 years ago. But do you think that's what made you go down the path you ended up going down? No, not really, you know. Like, I get asked that a lot, but it was more... The thing what got me dashed out was my mentality. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, like I said, they, they give us X amount of chances. Yeah, they, definitely. They kicked us out of school, but then they sent us to the naughty school. Then we got dashed out of there. So then they put us on this next scheme where all we had to do was last like three days a week. So one day would go like a youth club. The other day would be like an education thing. Mm-hmm. Then another day we'll go on trips. Do you get me? Yeah. Then why we got dashed out of that car, my bridging, what ended up being my cold D. <laughs> He's ended up saying some madness to his mum. I don't know what got said, but he said some madness to his mum saying, right, the woman's badding me up. Because he didn't want to go that day. Mm-hmm. So now when we've gone to go, she's like, right, you can't come in to my bedroom. So man is saying, right, what do you mean he can't? I said, you can, but he can't. Mm-hmm. So man is saying, right, well, if he can't go, we're not going. We're not going. Mm-hmm. And she's like, all right, fine, fine by me. So we said, you know what we're going to go do? We're going to go buy a car and it's your fault and then just got off. And that was it. Yeah. Cool. So that's what, 15? 16? Yeah, nah, so we would have st- still been about 15. All right, cool. So when... How much times have you actually gone jail once? Was it just yeah, one just long once. bird? Yeah, it's one long bird. Okay, fair enough. So what age is that from? 18. So between 15 to 18, what's going on? Because at this point, you're still not even a gang member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, because then at, at like this point here, when it starts. now we was rolling. Okay. Do you know what I mean? We had like man them around us. You understand what I'm saying? So when they're saying, right, what you're on tomorrow? I'm saying, right, we've got this dickhead thing to do. And I'm like, nah, that thing there is weak. And you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And another point, the school then made an agreement with a college right. to say, right, we're going to send you there to get your GCSEs done. Because remember, we got dashed out year 10. So you wouldn't have it. Yeah, so year 11, vitals point. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we're supposed to go to college. But then what, hap- what happened, yeah? Because remember, like I said, at this point, we was being seen with certain men. Mm-hmm. So this one day, I was in my class. And I must have looked out the window and I seen two rivals okay. walking through the college. And so I'm thinking, rah, they've come for me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So now I'm in the class. Then I must have got into something with the tutor. My man's like, oh, stop talking. So I'm like, what do you mean stop talking? I was like, stop talking. So I was chatting to some girl. Mm. So like, what do you mean stop talking? I was like, stop talking or get out. I said, rah, fight me. Don't talk to me like that. Fight me, innit? So he's like, what, what did you just I said, fight me. I said, come outside now and fight me. So then as I've gone outside to fight him. I must have shut the door, locked the door. That was it? Yeah, that was the end of my college days. Damn. How long did you last? About a week or two. <laughs> Damn. So it's just, yeah, more or less your mentality. Really. Yeah, yeah, that, that's all What led was. to that mentality though? What do you think the root of that is? I think me personally, it was like, because I'm on road and I'm getting shown love from these older men. You understand what I'm saying? I know who they are. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So where I'm knowing who they are and they're showing me love, like, you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. And they can't tell me nothing. Do mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I respect that. So, 15, you get 16 even, or whatever ages, you get kicked out of college. When does, when is it that you decide to actually be fully involved in the road? Nah, because even at the point of college, mm. I was still claiming to be a crip. Oh, so yeah. So what age does the crip thing start then? That was like 15, 16, so around that same time. So that was when it started. Yeah, yeah. And then, off of the back of you making that, did you then end up having new rivals? You know, like if I was to come out and say, right, like I'm yeah, from yeah. here or whatever. Yeah, what, yeah. what happened from then? Yeah, did you claim that? Because at first, yeah, it was like, well, I'm saying I'm OT crip. Then 
at first, like I said, man was saying, nah, that's some dead thing, that's some American thing, right, right, right. but then what happened where, where man are going to house parties and whatever else, yeah, it turned into like a little, a little mad function, so when we're going, we're rolling like 15, 20 man strong, mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying, so then when we're going in there, so we'll all be in there, the man will form like a circle, okay, like a mosh pit, you know, like a mosh pit, so everyone's in this circle now, so man is shouting, they don't really want it with the old T Crips uh, like yeah. doing that, yeah. But it's like a little, like a little anthem thing. So yeah. when we're saying they don't really want it with the old T Crips, a man would go in the middle and then spit like a four bar to end off oh, the thing. Real. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So they, and then doing a skank, and then man have to copy that skank. So everyone, he's in the middle doing this skank, then mm-hmm. everyone around's doing the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? So at what point? Because right now that's like that obviously sounds lit and whatnot. How did it get to the point where you lot actually have to end up doing shit? Because obviously, for you to have gone job, you would have had to have yeah. done shit. Like that sounds calm. The fact yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. even go to a party and yeah, spit yeah. that on a calm thing. Yeah. What yeah. point does it get peak where yeah. you actually have to be proper on your shit? Yeah, car. That off the strength for that now. So like you said, it was it was live, bro. Like we had the place Vibes, rocking. Yeah. yeah. So then Gala getting involved. Everyone's getting involved. So at first it's the man them, but now everyone's involved. Mm-hmm. And in true fashion. People don't really like that. Of course. And like not. I said at the same time, we was always affiliated to Gooch. Like at that point, the older man them to us, because remember, we was first generation. Mm. So the older man them to us is the likes of certain man, but they're Gooch. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So then in true fashion, the younger version of Dodderton have then adapted the bloods. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then they've come out with Moss Side Bloods. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? So at, at that point, there was loads of them. You had like the OT bloods and this bloods and that bloods, but the only one that stuck was the Mossai bloods. Right. And then they become our rivals. So that was just a direct rival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And before you made Crips, was there no Crips or bloods whatsoever? Was there even bloods nah, before now? Not in money. So then naturally speaking, you made Crips and then they decided they made we're going to make yeah, bloods yeah. to basically be your rivals. And I guess that's where it all kind of yeah. starts to kick off. Cool. So from that point, what happens between like Moss Side, not you obviously directly, but like what is the rivalry between you lot? Like what is it even over? What's happening? Like what's going not, on? You know the str- you know the sickest thing? Go on. Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. You understand what I'm Just saying? Just that you're claiming this, I'm claiming that. Yeah. And then it was like little things were going on, but it was never like directly us. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's the maddest part about it. Like you see if man just had the mindset to just say like, look, listen, like keeping it real that had nothing to do with us, you know. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, one or two things might go on, like, that had nothing to do with us. But it's like, right, them man are claiming blood. Right, what, them man are claiming blood? So now... If a blood does something. Yeah, so then it just turns into a madness. But at the same time, you know, like, they was all our age group anyway. So naturally, if they're Dodderton or whatever, and even if we didn't have a name, if we see them in town or in whatever, area, you don't know yeah, them. yeah, it's like, but that's what it's like, isn't it? It's true. It's like because they're from over there, so if man see them, even if you're not gang banging, you they're, they're, yeah, yeah. they're still the boy. Them, mm-hmm. they're still this, they're still that, and it's same vice versa. So it's like for one of them, if they were to see me, rah, that's that boy, them you, and that's Kieran and Proverbs, and and they're gonna try do me something. Do you know what I'm saying? Did that happen then at that point in time once you started claiming that was there people that would have obviously known you for you and then known that you created that set? Yeah. Did you get like backlash from that? Yeah, 100%, 100%, man. Like shootings and all them kind of things. Like mum would just pull up on you and just start letting off. You know the sickest thing? Mm. I couldn't even tell you who Who the fuck it it was that done whatever. You know, because I just know it's people in masks. Mm. So it could have been anyone, but Mm. I'm going to say it was them. Yeah. Because who else is it going to be? Do you know what I mean? So that was basically off the back of yeah, yeah, yeah. claiming that. Yeah. Um, so at that point, you're, what, 17, 18 when shit like that's happening? Nah, I was still living about 16. Okay. 16, 17, yeah. And you said you went to jail at? 18. 18, cool. So now coming up to 18, what's going on in that time of your life? How, how deep is it now in terms of just that whole Keep, OT Keeping it real, life. life got real for me at 17. Okay. So in about 2006, that's when it all started turning into a madness because, like we just said, where things are happening and things are going on, mm-hmm. remember, man is still seven. I'm 17, so the people that are with me are like, from like, say, the age of 13 
up to 17. Yeah, because you're the first generation. Yeah. So you are the oldest, basically. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Group. So then you think about it, as a 13 year old kid, 14, 15, whatever, like people's mums are saying to them, rah, don't be hanging around with that Kieran Proverbs guy. Like I've heard some rumors about him and Red Tur Tur. So now a lot of people fell off. And at my right hand man at the time, he's ended up going jail. He got um, an 18 month sentence. Mm-hmm. So he's in jail. So then I started chilling with, because at the same time, when I was doing what I was doing, I still chilled with like older man them. Mm-hmm. So I still chilled with like older man, but they was Gooch. Yeah, use your own set. Yeah. Mm. So I'm chilling with them. So then when he's gone jail, my cousin's gone jail, all the man them have gone jail now. He's saying to me, watch over my little brother for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he's in jail. So I'm saying yes. And then that's how my brethren today, that's how we started rolling. Okay. Because his older brother told me like, rah, check for my man. Do you mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So now after that, it become me and him. Right. So now he's my right hand man. Because remember, the man that turned out to be my cold D, he's gone jail. Yeah. So my brethren today, he, I ended up rolling with him because his brother said to me, watch over my man and whatever else. And then it, we just become the duo. So between 17 to 18, what's going on? Like what you like? Rough, all all yeah. types of madness, like people pulling up, pulling up on us, shooting. I got shot. Oh, you actually got hit? Yeah, yeah. My brethren got shot. Huh? Where do you get hit? I got hit in my back twice and my leg. Okay. What about your friend? Where do you get shot? He got shot in his leg. And you lost both, obviously. Now, I weren't with him when he got shot. Oh, it was a it, completely yeah, different situation. Okay. My situation, I got set up. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, I said that again in one of my stories as well. Because um, my mum, where she lived, it was like behind enemy lines. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But at the time, with my mindset. You didn't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, you had I go you had where I want, when I want. You understand what I'm saying? So we must have gone there. And I was with one of my brethren's and then. I must have gone into the shop. I used to be around there barefaced, no nothing, nothing to hide, you get me? So I've gone in the shop. He's outside the shop and he's chatting to some girl. Who's he? The, my brethren I was okay, with, yeah. Cool. So he's chatting to some girl. So she's gone to him, Ra, was that KPV then? So then he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, Ra, what's he doing around there? My man starts giving it large, yeah, it? Yeah. Ra, what? My man goes where he wants and right. You understand what I'm saying? So she's saying, give him my number. So I'm saying like, I didn't know this at the time. So he's got the number and then, but he give her his number. Okay. So then the next day now he's shouting me, saying to me like, rah, yo, I got this gal to link, man. I got this gal to link. You coming, you coming. So I'm like, I can't really be asked, man. Some dead thing, man. I can't really be asked, bro. Mm. He's like, nah, man, trust me. Come, come. But then the reason why he wants me to come is because remember, she's expecting me. So when she's messaging him, she thinks yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So when I'm saying I'm not coming, it's fucking up his yeah, yeah. His whole flex is popped down now, car. Yeah. I'm not going. Mm-hmm. So then ended up going. Said, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. But the same man who arranged the thing, he didn't come. Oh, the, the, your brethren? Yeah. Okay. The same man who arranged the thing, he didn't end up, turning he didn't end up coming, car. He didn't have a bike. Okay, so he's he like, yo, let me. It. So I'm saying, forget all that, man. Like, we just got off on him. So now we're on our way there. As we was on our way there, I was with um two, two or three other men. So as we're on our way there, we must have rolled through like this little estate thing. And I seen like three men from my side. What claim to be basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What claim to be my side bludger. So I've seen them, they've seen me. But some girl was on the doorstep, and when she see me, she's like, rah. Kevin Proverbs, don't come round there and don't say hello and rep. So I'm saying, Ra, stop saying my name, man. You're hotting me up. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So now Dave looked and seen it's me. So I'm looking. So I pretended I had some on me. So I'm saying, Ra, what? Yeah, you have to call the bluff sometimes. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So now they're not saying nothing. So I just carried on my mission, yeah? So then we've got to where we was going. And then one man that's with me, my man's turned to me and gone, who's all that over there? So I'm saying, where? He's like there calm as anything just like, like I'm like where he's like there but I'm on my phone messaging someone else so this I've is got, one of your G's as well yeah yeah, yeah. Proper. Okay. so I've got my head down so he's like where so I'm saying where and he's like there I'm so like, oh, shut up man stop chatting shit man carried on going about my business this was in like the space of like five seconds so then as I've looked up now there's like ten men in front of me ballied up guns in my face like yo back up but 
I thought it was my young bucks. I thought it was my brethren. Mm. So I'm laughing with them because they're laughing and joking. Like, ah, yeah, slipping, and slipping. This is in Mossad? Nah, this was in like Stratford. Okay. My, where my mum lived. Okay, yeah, you said she lived behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, come with you. So they're like laughing, like, yeah, yeah, back up, back up. So I'm like, yeah, 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 slipping. They're saying slipping. I said, nah, nah, you got me, you got me. But then everything just turned hostile. I right, back up, back up. So I'm like, rah. So at this point now, I've realised like it's not the man them. So I've dashed my bike and then run. Mm. Then all 10 of them like started chasing, man. But I'm like bobbing and weaving kind of thing. Yeah. So I must have run through some bush thinking that I could get to where I needed to go. But it was a dead end. Right. So when I've had to run back, I've had to run into the crowd. And that's when um, the first one, the first one just went, blow, and it hit me in my um, my left leg. Right. But you see where it's hit me? It's hit a nerve. Damn. So my foot's gone dead. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I'm running flat-footed. So I'm running, limping, and then I'm running. Then I caught a next one in my back. That's the one I caught in my lower back. Mm. But my leg and my lower back, they was in and out. So it just went straight in and straight Your back leg, out. Oh, so both the bullets just went in and out? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then now I'm I'm weak in it. I'm, of course. Then that's when the man's ran up behind me. And then this one I caught in my back here, put the thing to my back and then gone bang. But where it's like a high powered nine, high powered nine millimeter, like the force of it has threw me to the ground. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So now I'm on the ground. It's got the thing to my head and all that. And then... Um, it's going through your head at this time. You know, one of the sick, with the adrenaline and my mindset, it's like, like a donut. I'm thinking, rah, I've just been shot. I'm not even thinking about dying. I'm thinking, well, I've just been shot. Can't wait to tell the man them about this tomorrow. Sad, but yeah, 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 yeah. So then, where I'm on the floor now, now he's over me. And I've managed to like get onto my knees. So I'm on my knees. He stood in front of me. And he's got the thing to my head. And then I can hear man saying, rah, go and get them. Go get the rest of the man he was with because they all ran off. So I'm saying to them, leave them. You get me? Obviously, it's me you want because these men I was with, they weren't gang members. Like that, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying, leave them. It's me you want. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm saying, just forget all that. That's when he's got the thing to me. He's saying, oh, you know, you're dead and rare to terror and all these kind of things, yeah? Mm. So I'm saying, yeah, right, pull it. Pull it, man. Boss it. Boss it, you get me? So that's when he's like, oh, you want me to boss it? So I'm saying, boss it, man, boss it. Then he's gone. But it's, it's jammed. Mm. Yeah, gone. Clink. <laughs> So I'm thinking, bro, like, that's, that's all it. I needed to that's hear. It. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I've grabbed the strap off him, saying we're wrestling for the strap. I'm still trying to get up. Is it just you and him now? Because the other ones are going to yeah, chase yeah, the yeah. other people. Nah, because the others were around. But you see, when I've got the thing, mm. they've all started to, like, disperse a bit. So and I'm trying to, on, yeah. yeah, so I'm trying to unjam it. And you mm. understand what I'm saying? But then um, it just won't go off. So then that's when they just rushed me. They rushed me differently, innit? Like, they just started punching me up and stamping me out, kicking me in my face and all them kind of things. And then they got my man saying, just give us the strap and we'll leave you, innit? I'm thinking, give you the strap, bro. It's like, what? So what you, world? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then they've rushed me then. Me and him are scuffling. But then, like, they've grabbed hold of my face and I can't breathe. So now I have to, like, get them off me. So when I've got them off me, that's when the things fell. So he's grabbed the thing, attempted one last time. It won't go off, and then they just fucked off. Bad thing. So how long did that last for? Do you reckon? Obviously, you wouldn't know by minutes, but how long do you reckon that last for? From me getting to the park to the whole thing unfolding, I'll say no more than like five minutes. It's a madness, bro. Felt like forever. It's a blessing, though. though. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Big blessing. Yeah, if that didn't jam, you would not be here today, yeah, 100%, 100%, bro. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So at this point now, that's happened. What's your what condition are you in? You've been burning your back twice, your leg once. Yeah. You go to hospital, I assume. Yeah, nah, because then that's the mad part about it. So then after they've run off, I've got up now. So when I've got up, I'm walking, because it was in like a park. So I'm walking out of this park to get onto the main road. Mm -hmm. So then as I'm walking, I'm phoning one of the man that I was with. So I'm saying like, yo, come get me. So he's like, oh, what happened? What happened? I'm so, what the fuck do you mean? What happened, man? They shot me in it. Come and get me. I need to go to hospital. So he's like, oh, whereabouts are you? So I'm, I told him the location where I was at. Then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm coming now. I'm coming now. So I'm waiting for him. So this was like December night. 
so it's cold out and all that and it's all raining and that yeah so i'm sat there phone in my man then my other brethren's phone me like my gangbanger friends are phoning me now saying right yo what you saying g so i'm saying right i've just been shot in it i'll bail you back ah you dickhead yo yo my man saying he's been shot on red so i'm saying yo dickhead i've been shot in it i'll phone you back so i'm like no nah, no nah. so you man are passing the phone around but then that's getting me mad so as I'm getting mad, I can feel my blood leaking. Yeah. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they say when you get shot and that like, you need to kind of keep cool, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now where they're getting me mad, like my, my heart's racing. So when my heart's racing, like it's leaking. You mm-hmm. get me? So then I've hung the phone up on them. So now I'm phoning back my man again. But while I'm phoning up my man, I can see a car creeping down the road. So I'm thinking, oh, this is them again. So I just lay on the floor and play dead. That's what I would do. Yeah. So then the car's pulled up, stopped. And remember, I'm laying on the floor and I've looked. And I can see like the windows are steamed up. So I'm thinking, oh, that's defo then. So I've just played dead. Then they drove off. But in the midst of all this, like there was this man walking his dog. He's walked past me. So remember, I'm laying on the floor. So he's walked past me. He must have thought I was drunk or something. So he's looked at me. And then gone doing his thing. Come back. Then when he's come back about 20 minutes later, let's say, and I'm still on the floor slumped. But while... In oh. that process of that 20 minutes, I'm still phoning my brethren, like, where are you, bro? Where are you? And he's Did like, they think to call the ambulance? I, I was phoning the ambulance as well. Okay. But they're asking me stupid questions, like, where do you live? What's your name? What's your national insurance number? See, what's all this? But I've told them my name. Mm. So I've got it in my head. They know it's me. That's enough. They want me dead. Mm. So I'm saying, fuck them, innit? So I'm phoning my brethren, saying, yo, come and get me. He's like, I'm on the road now, but I can't see you. But I can see headlights down the road. So I'm saying, drive up the road, bro. And he's like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Two sets, two sets, put the phone down. So I'm laid there again. So then the old man's come back now. So he's saying to me, are you all right? So I'm saying, no, nah, I've just been shot. He's like, oh, what do you mean you've been shot? So he's come over. So now he's helping me. Mm-hmm. So then when he's helping me, um, he's phoning the ambulance as well. So he's like, oh, I've got this man here. He's been shot right to... So he's getting mad at the ambulance as well. Because he's saying, forget all that. Come here now. Forget mm. all that. Come here now. Because I don't know what they were saying to him. But then I'm shouting to my man, leave a minute. Fuck them. Fuck them. Leave them. They want me dead. They want me dead in it. Just leave. It. My man flipped on me. Shut up, Karen. Stop talking rubbish. You're talking rubbish. You ain't dying. So I'm like, rah. Like my man told me, you get me? <laughs> so then the ambulance has turned up, but it's at the top of the road. But what it is, you see with a shooting, mm. if the ambulance comes, they can't come to the scene until armed police, like, secure the... Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So he can he's saying to me, oh, the ambulance is here now. But then he's getting back on the phone to them saying, I can see the ambulance. Come up the road. Come up the road. But they're refusing to come up the road. But I know this, but he obviously doesn't. Then about a couple minutes later some woman and her daughter pulled up. So she's like, right, you's all right. So now I've got these civilians, random people helping me. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's one thing I always like to say. I like to say I shout out them all the time. And the power of social media, the dog walker's daughter has reached out to me and says, right, I was watching your video. Oh, for real. And that was my dad. So I'm saying, right, fucking hell, small world. you get what I'm saying? Crazy. Then arm response come, cut me out my clothes and all that. Then put me on, but I started at this point. Now Easy I was enough. going. You get me? So the old man saying to me, Don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep. So I was refusing to fall asleep. Five all come, put me in the ambulance. Then as soon as I got in the ambulance, that's when I went. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I also remember waking up in um, the trauma unit with all my family and everyone around me. Damn. You would have lost a lot of blood over that yeah, time because yeah. you was on the floor for a sec. Yeah, I was out there for time still. You was on the floor for a sec, man. So how long did it take for you to recover? Is your leg okay now? Nerve-wise, because you said it hit a nerve. So like, did it ever recover from that? Was it permanently damaged? Yeah, it's all right. You know what it is, though? Like, I think it's more psychological now. So right. when I'm stood, I'll lean to one side kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Right. Even like with my walk, it's still a bit weird, but I feel all right. Oh, definitely, man. As I said, it's a blessing. If that did not jam... That would have been it because yeah, he tried. Yeah. He did try yeah, to do yeah, it. Real, so it's mad. So that's 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17. Now 18, you go to jail. I actually don't even know what you went to jail for. Yeah. What did you go to jail for? What, what happened? The maddest thing about what I went to jail for, mm. the crime I committed there happened in 2006. Oh, for real? So when I was 17 still. Okay. Do you know what I mean? 
So this was shortly before the shooting. And it's the same thing again, mindset. So like I said, our thing was driving. So at this point now, we used to like take doors off, mm-hmm. the car keys. So where we're doing that, but we would always go out of the ends. Okay. So we would always go out of the ends and do what we're doing. But then obviously the young bucks are seeing what we're doing mm-hmm. and they're doing the same, but they're doing it in the hood. Do you get what I'm saying? So they must have done it to the wrong person, yeah? So now this guy is running around talking about he wants to see me, he wants to see me, rare ter ter, yeah? But at them times, these things, people always frets and say whatever they're saying, so it didn't really phase man. Mm-hmm. And the thing with this circle of people, we already had beef with them because a few of my other brethren, basically something's gone on and then my man's turned around and said it was them what shot at me. So now he's got the man them locked up on a conspiracy to murder charge. Right. Told the five oh it's over drugs or whatever else. Yeah. So we've already got beef with them. Mm-hmm. But it weren't right. No arms I was thinking it's stupid, isn't it? If you know he snitched on your brethren. Why are you gonna go? Yeah, there you understand with the arms? what I'm saying? Yeah, so that, makes sense. that was the thing. So it was more for me. I just used to bad them up when I see them. Mm. Like, oh, what you doing around there? Move your snitches and all them kind of things, yeah. But then where the man them have done whatever they've done to him, it's turned into he wants to see me. So now he's come to see me on this day and then he's talking off his face. But to this day, I don't know what he's talking about. So I'm saying this to him, but he's like, nah, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. So I'm saying, what are you talking about, bro? But he's like, right, you think you're bad because you've got guns and rare ter ter. But at this time, I had like a little two five key fob gun. Okay. So I used to wear around my neck. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying to him, I'm laughing at him. I'm saying, bro, you don't even know what's going on, you know. I could blast you right now, mm. but you're not worth it, bro. So he's like, yeah, all right. You think you're bad because you got guns. We got guns too. Don't say that, bro. Don't say that because now it's like, now you're taking it to another level. Because like I said, I've been seeing you and I've not been doing nothing, but now you're threatening me with guns. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's kind of a, a rule man used to roll by. Mm. Take out the threat before the threat gets you, in it. Facts. So I've left. I've just ended up leaving. He's there running his mouth. So I just left. Then I was sat at the youth club chilling. Sat at the youth club chilling. Then I decided to go home. So as I've gone home, I must have, um, like at this point, I was living at my mum's. So I've gone back to my mum's, but then I've seen a few of my friends down the road. I'm a brethren's gaff down the road, but these men aren't gangbangers. Mm-hmm. So then when I've gone there, man, I'm moving all weird. Do you understand what I'm saying? But at this point in my life, people that weren't gang members, they used to move weird around me anyway. Like, it's like they don't really Actually, want me. Yeah, paranoid, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like certain things, like I'll pull up on my brethren's, they'll have a car. So I'm saying, yo, Let's take the car for a spin, man. Oh, nah, nah, no petrol, no petrol. Making up dumb excuses. Then I'd go, hide around the corner or something, and I'd watch him get in the car. So I'd jump in the car like, right, what do you mean there's no, you know what I'm saying? So it's all these little things that used to go on. So when I've turned up now and I'm like, right, what's going on? Everyone's just moving weird. So then I'm saying to them like, right, what's up? But then one of my brethren, the same one, the same one that was my right hand at the time when we got the 4-4 when we was kids. Yeah. He's there. And he's on the phone to someone, but he's moving weird. And I can hear him saying, yeah, my man's here now. So I'm saying, right, who's that? Then he's put the phone down. Then my phone's rang. So now my phone's rang. So I'm thinking, right, who's this? So I'm like, hello. He's like, yeah, I told you. I told you. You think you're bad, innit? I told you. Now look, now look. He said, the 12 of us here, we got six guns and we're looking for you. You're at your mum's, yeah? So I'm thinking, right, homie's told him where I am. So now I'm looking at him like, right, are you serious? Mm. Then... I'm saying to my man, I am my mums. I'm in the hood. Why, where are you? And he's like, yeah, we're on our way. Now we're on Ayers Road. Now Ayers Road's are one of the main roads in Old Trafford. So now I flew to Ayers Road. So I've, I've left them. I'm saying, right, this little prick wants to shoot out, yeah? All right, safe. I've left. A couple of men have followed me. But I'm saying to my now nah, move. Move, innit? I'm doing this on my own, man. Mm. So I've gone. So the man them are following me anyway. So now, But I've not got nothing on me. I've just got this 2-5. Mm. I can't. 12 man, 6 guns, I can't go to <laughs> war with a 2-5, you understand what I'm saying? So, I've had to go get someone else. So, what I ended up getting was a sawn off shotgun. Yeah. Gone and got that. So, now I'm on my way back to meet him where he is. So, I'm riding down Stamford Street. It's one of the most notorious streets in Old Trafford. That was like, 
our that was like our central. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Uh, Stamford Street was our central. So I'm riding up Stamford. So as I'm riding up Stamford, I can see a van. Mm-hmm. Man, them have told me they're in a van. So I'm riding past, and then one of the kids, one of the kids have come out of the mosque, and then they've gone to me like, "Oh, are you, are you going to have a shootout with him?" So I'm saying, go home, go home. He's like, be careful, be careful. They got guns. This is like a seven-year-old kid, bro. Mm. Mama saying, be careful, be careful. I'm saying, now nah, go home. Everything will be all right. You get me? Mm. Gone there. So I've gone there. I can see like bare man scattered around. So I'm thinking, rah, they could just start raining on me. So I've rolled up. And then the first the first shot I let off was like at the crowd, like bang. And then that's when like half of them are scattered. But the, the man that I had the beef with, mm. he stood there like he's a bad boy. You get me? So I've lined him up. As I've lined him up, he's ran. Jumped in the back of the van. So now they're all in the van. So I've like, I'm unloading and reloading, yeah? So that's when I lined it up at the passenger side window. So I lined up at the passenger side window. Like the driver, the driver, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. The driver's looking at me, yeah? And... He's like panicking, trying to start the whip, but he's not starting. He's just like, no, 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 Secretly, I'm looking at him like, bro, start this whip, because I don't want to have to kill you. Do you know what I'm saying? So then he's like, no, 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 So I just gone, boom. You get me? That's when the windows are shut. like, Tsh. But as like the shots hit, that's when the van started. So now the van started, but it's like he's redlining like riding the clutch so it's the car's like the van's going like gang, 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 gang. but it's not moving it's just like ghosting do you know what I mean so yeah. I'm so he the car's moving I've seen the shot go off and he's gone like on the on the um, steering wheel so I'm thinking right he's dead so now everything's just gone in slow motion because the van's just moving I'm just still stood there with this thing in my hand the van's moving but where he's driving he's coming up to a corner so I'm thinking if he crashes into the wall Obviously, he's dead in it. So then he's gone and then he's like hit the corner. So I'm thinking, right, he's alive. Then that's when I've turned and I can see another car here with like four or five men in the car just looking at me like, so I'm thinking, right, you as well. You was with them as well. So that's when we started going on mad. I jumped on the bonnet of that car, lined them up, but I was trying to reload it again. Course, yeah. But then they've all scattered and so I've jumped off the bonnet. Man, they were kicking out windows and dragging them out the car and that fucking them up. But then I've like tried to chase one. Mm. So then my man's like, grab me. Grabbed all of me. Like, yo, brother, please. No, 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 no. So I just hit him with the shot. He's like, get off me. Then he ran off. Then we just left. But it's like, I knew. You know when you just know? I said, I know I'm getting nicked for that because it was just scatty. Yeah, it was scatty. It was just scatty. Everything was all. Man well, screaming. planned through either, yeah. was it? It was just off Man is screaming out my name and all them kind of things. So I just knew. Nah, I'm getting nicked for that. I knew it. So did you ever hit the guy that was in the driver's seat? No. Yeah, he got lashed. Okay. But he wasn't the intended target. Yeah, I know. He's the main guy that yeah. was chatting. This is why they charged me with conspiracy to murder. Because mm. they're saying, I plan to go kill the cousin. Right. Do you know what I mean? I plan to go kill him, but I didn't get him. I shot his cousin. So what really was an attempted murder? Because they've got all this backstory and one of the people that I was with, they went Queen's evidence on me. Right. Like one of the, the man that I was with went Queen's evidence on me. So now they've got a backstory. So that's where their conspiracy to murder stood. Do you know what I mean? Because they're saying, I planned to kill my man, didn't get him, so I got his cousin. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and you're saying after a year after that happened is when it all kind of come back? Yeah, because I got arrested for it. I went on the run. After that point, no, I left in it. Mm. Burnt up. The geese what went Queen's evidence on me, I give him a backpack with my clothes in and everything else and a bottle of turps. Mm-hmm. So listen to, burn them, mm-hmm. burn it. Just burn it, get rid of it. So I left him doing that while I've gone on the run. Funny story, you know. I ended up, I ended up coming to London. Okay. So I was in London for that, that whole in, time. Uh, yeah. Nah, I was down there for about a month. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But where I was down there, it was like I was in a um, ghetto. So I'm in Lewisham. Yeah. Lewisham yeah. Side, yeah. So I'm sat in this gaff, and I'm thinking, like in the ends, I'm the man. But it's like I'm sat in this house. I can't do nothing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So then I've gone. I've went to the shop. Simple thing. My people said to me, be careful going out there. Like 2006 times, like it was peaking in, in, in London. Definitely. So I'm saying, oh, whatever, man, I'm going. So I'm walking, walking. 
I must have got there. So this is the time when you remember man had the MP3s on the phone. Mm-hmm. So man is spitting bars, shit. but yeah, with yeah. the new era hats and <laughs> I've bust a corner. So I bumped into these man. So it's like, rah. So I've just kept walking. I've heard, who's this shoot, cuz? So I'm thinking, rah, chatting about me. So I've just got around the corner and I've ran. The man never chased me. So I've ran in the shop saying to the shopkeeper, yo, 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 hide me, hide me. From that point on, I said, rah, I felt like a victim. I said, I'm going back. I'm going back. I don't care. I'm going back. Went back. Shortly after that, I ended up getting arrested for it. At that point, it was attempted murder. So when I got arrested for it back then, it was like, I got bail. The five all come to me and said, tell us where you were staying and we'll give you bail. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, rah. I'm saying that I was at my mum's. They're like, we know you wasn't at your mum's because we went to your mum's and you hadn't been there. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, nah, I was at my mum's. He said, tell us where you was and you'll get bail. So I thought to myself, all right, give them an address. Then they've gone, searched the place, and then they give me bail. Yeah. So I'm thinking, raw. so now I feel like I'm untouchable. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm thinking, because I was expecting to go to jail. But then after that, now I was just out on the roads, and I, I think I lasted, like I said, about a year. You still keeping road. up with Fakir, you keeping your head Yeah, down? of course. I, I felt untouchable now. So man had this Superman feeling now. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Raw. I went on ID parade and all them kind of things, and I didn't get picked out. So I thought, raw. Okay. I feel like Superman. So did that me? more? Did you end up more or less getting caught because of your friend or whoever that guy was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what the case yeah. basically was. Because this is this is another point. Yeah, the same man what snitched on me. He was there when I got shot. So now, what he says is that when he's run off, he's ran into Five O. Five O stopped him and gone rah. What 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 are you doing around there? What's going on? So he's like, oh, get off me, Kieran's just been shot. So they're like, what? Get in the back of the car. Then he's saying like, he just told them that I had been shot. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So when I was in hospital, he come to see me. And then I'm saying to him like, Ra, what happened? Like, what what was what was the same, man? What was the conversation? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. They're just chatting shit. So I'm saying, you didn't say no names, did you? And he's like, no, 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 I didn't. Why, why shouldn't I have though? So I'm saying, what do you mean? Why shouldn't you have? I said, do you think I want these men in jail? Mm. said you've just shot me bro like retaliation's a must you understand what I'm saying like forget all that and he's like no no we didn't say anything but the maddest thing 5-0 have come to the hospital but they kept coming back and forth do you understand what I'm saying because I told them to stand down because when I've got to the hospital I I was on an armed guard so where I was on an armed guard they weren't letting no males in to see me just females okay so I'm saying to them like look listen I need the man them to come and see me they said the only way we're letting men in is if you tell us to stand down. Okay. So I'm saying, all right, well, stand down. They said, are you sure? I said, yeah. So they said, all right, at shift change, we're going to stand down. So at six o'clock that night, we're going to stand down. I said, all right, sweet. The day they stood down was the day one of the enemies come in the room. Oh, man. Yeah, bro, it was peak Timing. So my man's come in the room and he's like, yo, what are you saying? So I'm like, right, not on what you say, man. And he's gone are you that kid that got shot in Stratford? So I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, who was it? I'm saying, he says, are you from them sides? So where he's asking me these questions, I know, rah, he must be one of them. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm from around them sides, yeah? So he's like, oh, I bet it was them fucking gooch boys, you know, and so I'm thinking, rah. Remember at this point, I'm in the bed, I've got um, a splint on my foot and I'm in the bed with um, a catheter in and all them so I was bro I was writ off yeah you couldn't do so shit. now I'm just like yeah 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 probably was probably was so he's like nah trust me rude boy trust me we're gonna find out who it was you know we're gonna find so now he's talking or we're gonna I'm thinking raw <laughs> death for one of them you yeah. understand what I'm saying then he's like you smoke weed in that so I'm like yeah 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 and he's like do you want to come outside for a spliff so I'm like ah look can't really he said no nah, i'll put you in a wheelchair man i'll take you outside now when i think about it he knew full fine well who i was right you understand what i'm saying i'm thinking i pulled the wool over his eyes saying yeah yeah now nah, i'm from you understand what i'm saying so i think what well, to get me outside to finish off the job yeah, yeah to get what i'm saying so then the day after or something is when the man them have come and that's when i'm saying to my man like yo you understand what i'm saying and five oh have come in so i'm saying to five oh yo nothing to say man no one to say, bounce, cut, move. You mm. get me? Then they've gone, calm down, we're not here to see you. 
So I'm like, what do you mean you're not here to see me? Then they're like, we're here to see him. With your friend? Yeah. Pulled my man out. So now man, I'm thinking, right. So I'm looking at the man. I'm like, yo, what's going on there? Then he's come back in. The five old guys looked at me and smiled. So I'm like, yeah, but this is a man like me and him always had a back and forth thing going on because he always said, he used to go to my mum and say things like, look, listen, he's getting involved with some heavy hitter kind of thing. Mm. So we always had that back and forth, like cat and mouse thing. Yeah. So he's looked at me, smiles. I've just smiled back at him and then he's gone. So I'm saying to my man, Ra, what was all that about? He's like, oh, no, 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 nothing, 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 nothing. Just, just asking me questions. I said, what kind of questions though? And he's like, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I said, all right, safe. I'll, I'll chat you when I get out of here. So when they've gone, I've said to one of my brethren, I said, keep an eye on him. Mm. Keep an eye on him. So then they've gone. Then a couple of days later, because I was in the hospital for about three or four weeks. A couple of days later, I'm saying to the man, and Rob, where's my man? Oh, no, he's about, he's about, he's about. So I'm saying, all right, safe. By the time I've come out of the hospital, mm -hmm. now my man's disappeared. Disappeared off the face of the earth. So I'm saying, right, where is he? Now I'm getting calls from the other side saying like, rah, my man's made a statement. Mm -hmm. You get me saying someone you was with has made a statement. So now I'm putting two and two together saying, right, it must have been my man. So at this point now, when the five all coming to me, I'm saying like, rah, I ain't got no beat because the people, them, what they say done it, had been arrested. So yeah. now the five all come and say, yeah, we know we've got such and such in custody. So, so I'm saying like, nah, I ain't got no beef with them. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I can't see why they would have shot me because I ain't got no beef with them. Mm -hmm. So then, I've made that statement saying I ain't got no beef with them, man. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't got no direct beef with these man, so I can't see why they would have shot me. So then, I've got man barely my phone saying like, right, we need to sort out the snitch kind of thing. So I'm saying, oh yeah. I said, I'm down for that. I'm saying, because I don't want man in jail. Like we need to hold court in the streets kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then we're doing this back and forth thing. Then I've ended up getting hold of my man's number. My brethren yeah. that had snitched, yeah. And the girl what set it up. So I've ended up getting these people's number. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to them, look, listen, you just need to drop your statements. Drop mm -hmm. your statement, car. They're saying to me, oh, why, why, why? But I'm not stupid. You're in police protection. Yeah, so you're going to... Yeah, so I'm saying like, nah. Tax, yeah, because I'm saying yeah. it weren't them. Mm -hmm. It weren't them. They've got the wrong people. It weren't them. So now, back and forth thing. I've ended up going court for on them lot's trial. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying like, look, listen. These people didn't shoot me. I ain't got no beef with them and whatever else. Yeah, but... They've got these two other people on Queen's Evidence saying it was. And then that was that. And then, yeah, so my man that snitched on that case mm. ended up snitching on me a whole year later. About that whole thing? Why? Yeah, yeah. Were they interrogating him? Like, I don't know. Why? I don't know, but this is the maddest thing. So it's like now, another video what I put out, it's like I'm sat there and I'm breaking it down. Mm. Before all this, because after... The shooting what I went jail for in 2006, we must have got arrested in a car. Okay. Well, I went in the car. Three, four of my brethren was in a car. Mm -hmm. And then I was outside the car with two girls. So we've sent a man to the shop. You understand what I'm saying? It was summer's day. So we've sent a man to the shop yeah. for some ice creams and whatever else. Yeah. So he's taking forever. Mine must take him forever. So man's thinking, wow, where's this guy? So then man, I said, we're going to drive around to the shop and see where he is. So as they've gone to drive off, five of drove in. We're in like a cul-de-sac. So the five of drove in. And one's come running through the alleyway. So now they've got us pinned. So I'm saying, right, five oh. That's it. So then the man them that was in the car tried to drive five oh blocked him in. Then they've been arrested. So they had them all sat on the curb. I was stood across the road with these two girls. Right. So the five old guys looking at me. So I'm saying, you looking at me for, man? He said, you got lucky today. So I'm saying, what do you mean I got lucky? He's like, you got lucky. Whatever, man. It's so like a donor. I'm just still stood there. I should have left, but I didn't. Then the vans come, put them three in the back of the van. And then they've come. I've heard my man on the radio saying, what about Proverbs? Then I've heard the radio say, arrest him too. It's like a donut. I'm trying to, oh, what do you mean arrest me too? You understand what I'm saying? I've got arrested. arrest this. Now we're all in the back of the van. Then we was in the station for about three days. Mm -hmm. I was locked up in the station for three days, but then they've grabbed two of the young bucks as well. They've arrested them from somewhere else. Okay. 
So what's happened, they've tried to, basically we had these cars. So these cars were like the same. We was in these cars doing all types of madness in it, mm-hmm. like robbing and whatever else. So then on the third day of being in the police station, they've come and charged us. Then they've charged us. So then the next day we were supposed to go court. So they've come charge me at the after clock in the, at the night. Then they've said, all right, oh, so at seven o'clock you go into court. Mm-hmm. But at this point, I was on bail for the attempted murder. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I've walked into the police station, the booking me in, the woman's gone to me. She's gone, are you on bail for murder? So I'm like, no, it's only an attempt. She's gone, only an attempt. She started getting mad. Then she's looked at my mom what arrested me, said, have you heard him? Only an attempt. But that was the mindset I had. Then when we got charged, was supposed to go court, so then they've bust my door at six in the breakfast pack and whatever else yeah she said get ready for court so i'm saying all right about half an hour had passed my door's opened again but i'm f- thinking it's seven o'clock so i'm getting up to go out yeah my man's blocked the doorway so i'm like bro what's up man and he's like just staring at me so i'm saying right you're gonna move and he's just standing so me and him are having a standoff then i've gone to the desk the custody sergeant's doing the same thing just staring at me so I'm like, what are you looking at, man? Like, what's up? He said, this don't normally happen. But CPS have dropped the charges. So I'm saying, swear down. They're saying, yeah, CPS have dro- Again, I'm feeling untouchable again. Yeah, because how you beat the next yeah, 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 yeah. So now I've just gone. Left the place. I got a phone call. Now I'm lying. I walked home from Longsight Police Station. But Longsight is enemy territory. So I've walked home from there. I didn't walk home. I ran through Longsight. Got into town and then cut through there and then when I've got back to the hood I've gone to my Bridging's house mm-hmm. the same one that was with me when we got Nick yeah? my bike was in his house so I've knocked on his door he's opened the door so I'm saying bro you as well but I thought my charges got dropped because I went in the car yeah, so yeah. when I've seen him I'm like bro yours there, as though. well yeah. you understand what I'm saying so he's like yeah 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 so now me and him have gone walking gone for a walk we're in our prison issue tracksuits um, police station tracksuits so we're walking down the road. In the distance, I can see my other brethren and the snitch. So I'm thinking, bro, them as well. So now we've run over to them. So man, I say, yo, let me see yours. Let me see yours. The no further action team. Then we've gone to like my man, the one that ended up being the snitcher. And he's saying, like we're saying, let's see yours. He's got a charge sheet. So man, I'm saying, you donut, you've been charged. But then it's like, now when I think about it, man never seen nothing come of that whole thing with him. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm thinking now, so in my head, I'm thinking you were sent on a mission. Yeah. Because at this point, I was fully active well, in the police eyes because remember, I've just got out of this attempted murder. All types of other things are going on. Five all keep going to my mum's house saying like, look, listen, he's getting involved with heavy hitters. But at the point, I'm not registering on this. Mm. I'm just feeling like I'm on top of the world. So I feel he was on a mission from then. Shortly after that is when I got shot. So then he's gone into witness protection from then. So I'm thinking when he's saying he ran out of the park, he didn't run out of nowhere. He's gone. At five off contacted him, said, look, he's just been shot. What happened? And that's where so he's... So even prior to that, he was yeah, already working yeah, I, with them. That's what I feel. Mm. That's what I feel, yeah. I'm with you. Damn. Yeah. That's a madness. Do you yeah. speak to him now, no? No, he's he's in um, his protection, yeah. Oh, he's still in protection till yeah, now. Yeah. I feel so I don't know. Okay. Like, I'm yeah. on a you see what it is for me right here, right now. I'm on a different path. Mm. So it's like with everyone. You ain't really so, associated to that world no Yeah, more. so it's like even to people what have done things to me in the past, people what are I've done things to. Like if I've done something to them, all I can do is say like I'm not on that no more. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if someone's got something with me, it's like I'm saying, I'm not in that world anymore. Mm-hmm. But obviously, if, it is what it is, kind yeah, of if that's what they want to do, then that's for them. But I'm not in that world anymore. Cool. So at that point, you've all got off NFA, no further action. You still, do you fully at this point know he's a snitch? Nah, that's because when I think about it now, mm. as in present day, mm. is when I think like, rah, that was a bit weird. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I seen his charge sheet. Mm. I seen the charge sheet. Do you know what I mean? But then nothing ever came of it. But from that point up until when I got shot, it was in like the space of like a month, let's say. 
Mm. Do you know what I mean? So then after I've got shot is when he's ended up going into witness protection anyway. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But now when I think about it now, I still feel like he was working with them from then. Before anyway, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So you're on bail for this stuff, whatever. They've dropped the charges for the time you get nicked just randomly on the road, right? Mm. But you still got those other things to fight that are attempted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at yeah. what point do they then turn it to a conspiracy? Obviously, they got that information because he snitched. Yeah. But when do they say to you, you're no longer fighting? About attempted? six months later. I'll okay. say about six months later, I got no further action for the attempted. Yeah, the shooting. So now it was like, I'm free again. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? But at this point, now it was like, I'm still on the roads, but I've been shot and all these kind of things. So it's like, in my head, I'm secretly thinking to myself, like, this is some bullshit, you know. Mm. But at this point now, you're in too deep. You understand what I'm saying? Cause it's like, people have made attempts on your life and all these kind of things. So now it's more like the get back. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And where I've come up, when I come out of the hospital, I come out of the hospital a few weeks later. So I got shot end of December. So then I was in for like a month. So I come out like the back end of January. So where I've come out of the hospital now, I was on road and like everyone's waiting for the get back. Do you know what I mean? So fresh out of the hospital, I think it was like a hospital about two weeks. And then I was back out there on bike with my foot in a fucking cast and whatever else, like getting about. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? So it was just, it was all just a madness, you know. It was all just a madness, but nothing ever come of it. And in, in that whole time frame is when my brethren got shot. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Which one was that? I remember you saying two of you got shot at two different times. Which yeah, that brethren was is that, now? that same one. Okay. Like, so what was my right hand man at the time? Yeah. Do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? He's ended up getting shot on, on a separate thing. So now it's like, but everything just happened so fast. And at this point, it just turned into like tick for tack shootings. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like mad situations. Like I'm on road chilling, waiting for the man then. My same right hand man. He's gone to sell someone some weed or something. So I'm just sat on the front line, just waiting for him. Someone's pulled up to me in a car a guy and a girl, what I know. So I'm chatting to them in the car. My man's like, who's all that over there? But I'm waiting for the man them to come over from my side. So I'm saying, it's the man them, man, chill. Just chill out, man. He's like, are you sure? I'm saying, yeah, man, it's the man them, but I've not looked. Then he's gone, nah, but are you sure though? Then I've looked. And that's when I seen like 10 men, like it's like they were hitting the corner, but not stopping. Mm. And I just seen the red bandana. So you know what time it Yeah, was. so I'm saying to my man, yo, get off, get off. So now I've like ripped off. My brethren's in the alleyway, but I'm thinking, shit, he's in the alleyway on his own. So now I've ripped off, but then I've tried to come back round to where he was to try and meet up with him. You know, it's like, I don't want to leave him slipping because he don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's real. So then it's gone off. He started letting, they started letting off after me because I'm riding up the road. My brethren's mum's come to a window. Like they've sent two after her. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? And it was all just madness like that. So, where they've done that and then fucked off. So, and all the police are on our side of the field. Mm -hmm. So, we know there's none over their side. So, now we go back over there and do, do what whatever. we need to do. Yeah. So, then when the five are all over, then they'll come back over to us. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So, how much do you think happened in, like, how much booze do you reckon happened in that time period of that? Like? So many. And that's the thing. It's like, when, because then, in, this was like early 07. So, in, in mid to late 07 we all got locked up all of us got locked up everyone if you was active at that point you, you got locked up, up. Yeah. so then when we, everyone got locked up there's a documentary out about it oh for real yeah where they're saying the gun crime dropped like 95% madness but it's like where with that documentary they've tried to pin it on like two man mm. but really and truly like they locked everybody up at mm -hmm. that time do you get what I'm saying so that's why the gun crime had dropped like 95% that's crazy so then when does it open up and they say yeah look it's a conspiracy thing and what do you what information do you get because obviously once you have like a solicitor or lawyer whatever, yeah, yeah, you yeah. find out what the case is what yeah. do you have on you I found out when they arrested me mm. so like I said back end of set, um, 07 I was just chilling chilling because then you see with all that tick for tack thing I was saying mm. They kept coming to my house, raiding my house and doing mad things like they would come, put me in cuffs, make me stand in the kitchen. 
but I'm in my boxes, so I'm saying to them like, "Raw, let me put some clothes on." They're saying to me now, nah, "We're arresting you for possession of a firearm with intent to danger lives." But if we don't find the firearm, we're gonna de-arrest you. All I'm hearing is de-arrest. Something. Oh, I, I know I ain't got no gun in the house. Nice. Said they'll come. Didn't find nothing. De-arrest me. But like again, all these things you I should have known. Ego, yeah, I should have known the run you bro. Because mm. we know if I've all got the slightest thing though, Don't even to just get you on remand, mm. they'll leave you locked up. But I'm just feeling untouchable. Do you get what I'm saying? Then that was like middle of 07, middle of 07. Then like towards the back end, they've come and locked me up. So then I was just in my room. I was with my little brother actually. So me and him are in there. They've come in and they've gone, oh, we're arresting you on suspicion of, no, they didn't even say suspicion, said we're arresting you for a shooting that occurred last year on Stamford Street. So when he said that, I just looked at him and smiled, like, to know you're coming back to me for this, I know I'm gone. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? So I just for them to come back to, they yeah, have yeah, something. Yeah. Sorry yeah. To, yeah. So I just smiled at him and he just looked at me and smiled as well. So I thought, yeah, fair dues, isn't it? That's it. So, how long does the trial go on for? Well, not the trial, the whole case overall. How long? You're remanded at this point then, surely, right? Yeah, I got remanded. So, I got I went, I got arrested September the 23rd. I think I got remanded a few days later. Mm-hmm. Then, I went to jail. Then, while I was in jail, because they sent me up, um, way up north. So, in like, between Scotland and Newcastle, yeah? Right. So, then, when I have got there, like a week or so later... They've mm. come and shipped me out, sent me to Lancaster Farms. So now I'm in Lancaster Farms and then the screws have come and opened my door one day and said, you, you need to go phone your solicitor. I'm saying, right, why? Said, we've had a message, said, phone your solicitor. All right, safe. Gone and phone my solicitor. Then she's like, listen, don't panic. You're going to be um, re-arrested again, police produce. So I'm like, for what? She's like, I'm not sure, but you'll find out tomorrow. Said, they're going to come get you tomorrow morning. Be prepared. All right, safe. But the man them have been writing me letters saying, right, five or, five or taking a the piss. They're trying to rope you on them man's case. But I don't know who them man is. That Obviously, prison letters, like, yeah. that's all it said. Five or taking the piss, G, trying to rope you in on them man's case. So I'm like, who's them? Like, there were so many cases at the time. Like, who is them man? Mm-hmm. Then I've gone the next day. Then I got arrested for some robberies and, like, five different firearm offences and all types of madness. I'm thinking, rah. But then obviously the five are telling me who my cold are. They're mm-hmm. saying, so on such and such a day, you was with this person, that person, this person, that person. I'm saying, the fuck, I'm sat there thinking like, it weren't me, but I've gone in there on some gangster thing. Like I'm, do we done like a prepared statement where my solicitor will say, rare tear tear. I'm just supposed to say my name. Mm-hmm. I didn't even bother say that. And I'm just sat there just, not saying a word, just looking at my man. Then they're saying whatever they're saying to me. And then I've just said, I'm going back to jail now. Then he's just got mad, locked off the thing. And then, but he's told me, the five old told me, this is, how, this is how mad it is. The five old told me who said I was there. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So they've told me someone else's name now. So I'm thinking, my man. I didn't even know this guy was even involved in anything. Like, I know this geezer from young. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So then, I'm saying to them, I'm a prisoner. I, I'm entitled to a phone call. Mm. Then they're like, you're not getting off. I said, but I'm a prisoner. I'm entitled to a phone call. I'm incited to ex- exercise. And then entitled to a phone call. But I don't want no exercise. Just give me the phone call. My man took me to a side and said, listen, if anything happens to the witness, I'm coming for you. So I'm like, bro. I ain't got no nigga. I'm stood there thinking I've not even done this, so I'm not even worrying about this. I'm more worried about the conspiracy to murder you got me on. Do you get me? Mm. Made a phone call, told my people, and said, Ra, look, they've arrested me again. I'll chat to you proper when I get back to jail. Then they charged me and they sent me back to jail. So I ended up with conspiracy to rob robberies and about five different firearm offences. Right. Did they ever find any firearms now? No, nah, th- bro, that had nothing to do with me. Mm. That case had nothing to do with they me. They just tried to just tie you in. Yeah, yeah. They, they did tie me in on it because then I got convicted for it. Oh, for how long did you get for that? I got a seven IPP. Okay. Concurrent to my 12 IPP. So what's that, like eight, 19? Yeah, but speaking. They, they rolled, they run together. Okay. So while my 12's running, 
My seven, seven was running as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and IPP, I kind of know what it is, mm. but it's like it's like a assessment type thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it's a sentence for public protection. So basically, if you're still deemed as a threat to um, a danger to the public, you'll stay in jail. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to prove that you're no longer a threat to society. Do you feel as if like jail was good for you? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. I think it was, and obviously it's about you. But like, I think if you didn't go to jail, you still would have been out here on fuckery well, until if, you got caught. You would have ended up dying yeah, or just yeah, yeah going, exactly. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, car. Everyone thinks like, oh, if you didn't go to jail when you did, you would have got lifed off. Or, nah, you would have still been out on bullshit. Man would have been dead. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Like yeah, dead. Because when I went to the point, I went to jail. The streets was fire. It was fire. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And you can't really take nothing away from them, man. Because they had us under the same pressure we had them under. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So as much as I'm saying like we was active, so was they. Mm. They was doing what they was doing. They was riding us the same way we was riding on them. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I could have died. Yeah, I probably would have died if I didn't go to jail when I did. And that's the maddest thing. You see, when I went to jail, it was like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, like, like you feel a bit safer. Yeah, 100%. Because like, yeah. the worst thing that can happen in jail, a man can stab you up. up. Or stab, yeah. yeah, that's it. But on road, like, anywhere like man could just pop up and just scatter your brains bro you yeah. understand what I'm saying but in jail it's like worst thing that could happen you'll get rushed or stabbed up yeah a man ain't really trying to kill you in jail yeah for real as much yeah, that, as that's like, a mad yeah, yeah as much as people have lost their life in jail like I stand by no one's really going out trying to kill you yeah, yeah car yeah. you know you're never getting out oh, yeah. even the man them that are doing like 35 years if you're doing 35 years in jail, it's not like you sat there riding your 35. Mm. You're focusing on appeals and all them kind of things, like trying to find little holes in the case that can make, you understand what I'm saying? To get you a lesser sentence or whatever. So you're not sat there thinking, I could kill my man now, you know, car. I'm doing 35 years, car. You're focusing on your appeal. Trying to get out, yeah. yeah. So it's a safe place, if you know what I mean. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So during that time period, now you're in there for 12 years straight. And when you first get sentenced, you ain't even... What do you think, like, of IPP? Do you even think you're getting up? I didn't know what it was. And no one knew what it was. Because remember, IPP come out in about 2006. Okay. Yeah. So then we got ours in 2007, 2008. So it's only been out for two years. Mm. So the people then what was getting IPP, they was getting, like, six months, 18 months. And so what everyone believed IPP was, if you're never going to get your first parole, so then... You have to do your tariff again. Because mm-hmm. realistically, if man are doing six month IPP, you're going to have to do another six months before you can have another parole. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So my my legal team have told my mum, he's got a 12 IPP. So he has to do 12 years, go for his parole. But he's not going to get his first parole. So he's going to have to do his 12 years again. So my mum's saying like, rah, he's going to have to do 25 years, 24 years. So then... They're like, oh, basically, that's how IPP is. Do you understand what I'm saying? So no one even knew what IPP was. I didn't know what it was. Mm. I just thought, rah, well, i got to do 12 years. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I'm not going to get my first parole. Cool. So for, through that sentence, what got you through those 12 years? Because I can't, like, I can't imagine 12 years behind the same four walls pretty much near enough every day. Yeah, car. it's like, for me, it was in the first, like, the first half of my sentence, mm. I was still on wickedness in it, so I'm still repping, I'm still banging and you understand what I'm saying so it's it's more like that's carrying me through do you get what I'm saying like if I see man or man see me then it's going off or it's not or do you understand what I'm saying but then um, I got cut aid I got made cut a so that's when you're high not high risk but it's like for higher crimes right? yeah 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 so yeah. it's like basically if you're deemed as a threat to um, there's, there's a criteria for it so if you're a threat to the secretary of the state or whatever, some madness anyway, they mm. break it down and you become a category um, prisoner. So it's high security, mm-hmm. yeah? So you no escape or nothing. But I was 19 at the time, so mm-hmm. they sent me to Strange Ways. So now I'm in there with like people what are 25 and up, but there's killers in there, people that are in, all yeah, all type of, of mad yeah. things. You understand? So it's when I've gone there and I'm chatting to a few of my like older brethren, do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, when they're chatting to me, I'm sat there thinking like, hold on, everything what the man them, what are younger than them, have been telling me, you's like aren't saying that, you understand what I'm saying? So this is what I say, it's like, 
the people that was above me, like they're telling me like, bro, you have to, you have to move like this. So that's why I move in the way I'm moving. Mm. But then when I've met the OGs now, mm. they're telling me like, that's some dickhead thing. Do your bird and go home to your family. Yeah. So now from then, when, cause then that was like, um, oh, eight, oh, nine. Yeah. So in oh, nine, I come off Cate, then they sent me to Morelands. So I've gone back in, so I've gone from an adult, um, establishment back to a young offenders. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in there with this OG mentality now. Do you understand what I'm saying? So where I was on madness before, it's like I'm still down for whatever. But you ain't going out your way. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more like if we see a man and he's on something, then it is what it is, isn't it? But if I see a man and he says he's not on nothing, we let him breathe, innit? Mm -hmm. So that was the thing. And that's how I went through my sentence after that. Then when I turned 21, went to Loudon Grange. Then... Loudon Grange, it was a private jail. So that was more like road. The man them, the cons run that jail. Mm. The screws are just there to open and shut doors. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So then where I'm with couple man them again, and then certain other man started coming with getting into little dickhead beefs and this and that. So now it's about, that was 2010 I went there. So in about 2012, like I said on my other interview and my videos, is when my grand passed away. Right. So when my grand's passed away now, it's like, that's when I started thinking to myself, like, what what am I doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm in jail for this bullshit. And that was my only fear going to jail. I thought, if I go to jail for this long time, I'm never going to see her again. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So now my mindset now, it's like, I've missed being with you because of this bullshit. Yeah, you get what I'm bullshit. saying? Yeah. yeah. So then it's like, so now that's where the transition started happening. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I'm starting to think like, yo, what am I doing in my life? But it's like, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, like we said, you know, yeah, deep in it. I've been doing this since about, I've been on the road since about the age of 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking, what am I going to do in my life? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So in 2012, would have been 23. Yeah. So for like the past nine, 10 years, this is all I've been doing. And then, that's when I got started to speak into my missus again. Mm -hmm. Random. Like, this is why I say, like, due to the, like, the blessings and the love of God, yeah? It, it couldn't have come up more a better time. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, I lost my gran. So now it's like I'm in this spiral. I don't know what's going on. What am I going to do in my life? And then randomly, she reached out to my sister on Facebook and said, right, how's your brother? Now, I know my partner from school. So it's like when... She's saying, how's your brother? Now me and her got chatting. So now it's like, you see, to be able to talk to someone, but not have to put on this bravado. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I can be caring mm -hmm. when I'm talking to her, but when I'm talking to anyone else, I have to be KPB. Of course. You understand what I'm saying? I have to be Killer Capes from OT Crip. And you understand what I'm saying? So it's just like that. So now I'm just chatting to her. And then I was on all the wing with my Coldies and my brethren's. But at this point, 2012, my code D's got like seven IPPs and whatever else. So I'm, right. I've got a 12. So my parole date is 2019. Mm. Their parole date is 2014. In 2012, I'm on this wing smoking weed, which is getting piss tests and getting nickings and whatever else. Yeah? But I'm thinking, truth be told, in two years time, you men are going for parole. Yeah. I've still got like six years to do. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's when like the penny dropped and I just thought, you know what? I need, I need to, I just need to, I need to just move. I need to just move off this wing. I've got my enhanced. I need to go on the enhanced wing and just live. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like try and steer away from all that. And then that's what I started doing. And when I've gone into the enhanced wing, because it was almost like I was one foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not gang banging, but I still want to smoke weed and do whatever. And the man them are doing what they're doing. So I was kind of secretly involved in that. Mm -hmm. So I got shipped out and that's why I ended up in high security. And do you think that done good for you or bad or nothing? What do you think? Now, high security was definitely an eye opener. Because mm. it's like being in Loudoun Grange and all them kind of things, doing a 12 year IPP, it was like one of the biggest sentence. Because when I first got Loudoun Grange, they weren't accepting lifers. Mm. But IPP had changed from a life sentence to like IPP, so it was his own sentence, so they stopped classing us as lifers, so we got into Loudon Grange on a loophole. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm in Loudon Grange now. So I'm doing one of the longest in Loudon. Mm. But you see when I've got to high security, my 12 year IP, nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah, these men are doing 30 that, years. Yeah. The average sentence in them high security jails oh, nah. is a wreck of 30. Mm-hmm. Not 30 years straight, a wreck. Mm-hmm. That's the average sentence. I'm in them a 12 IPP. I'm chatting to man. These men are the same age. Man, man that are younger than me. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because at this point, 2013, so I'd have been 24. So now you've got like 21 and up. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing 21 year olds with 30 years. I'm thinking, bro, this is mad. Mm-hmm. And that's when like, I started thinking and moving different. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I've still got my gal there. And... Now it's like I'm moving different. So rather than doing the gang side of it, I'm more on a money thing. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make dough. Mm-hmm. You know, like the conversation was having before, I'm trying to make money to make sure when I do get out, I don't have to go back to that. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And that was like the changing point for me. And you come out in 2019. Yeah. Because then from, I'd done about, did you get any day releases? Yeah, I've done about four years in high security. Mm. So, yeah, so about 12, 12. Yeah, four years in high security. So, in the back end of 2016, I got sent back to Cat B. Okay. So, I was in Dovegate. So, now, where I'm there now, so now I'm fighting for my um, parole because you get a pre-tariff parole. Mm-hmm. So, nine years into my 12, I can apply for open prison. Yeah. So, then... Well, I've, when I was in um, Whitemore, they done a madness. They won't give me my parole. So I've ended up getting shipped out. I started using my head in it. So I'm putting all these things in complaints in writing. So when they're writing back to me saying what they're saying, I know they're stitching me up, mm-hmm. but I need it in writing. Yeah, literally. So then when I've got to Dovegate now, I'm putting my case to my inside probation. I'm saying, look, they've took the piss, you know, because they shouldn't be doing this and some legal side of it. My man says, you know what, you're right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're right. They have took the piss. So we're going to fight for your parole from here and now. Mm. So that was about early 2017. The whole of 2017, I'm fighting this thing. It started going through. Then they've said to me, "In um, it was Valentine's Day. Maddie's thing, Valentine's Day, 2018. I had my parole date. So I've gone. A couple of weeks later, I got my parole. Then took about six months about five months so from february up until june i got my cat d in that time frame and i went to cat d so, um yeah uh, june two six two eighteen okay so then the rest of that must have been the breeze then it wasn't Fair it enough. wasn't no nah. because it is like now i'm in open prison mm. so there's no walls no nothing i can walk in and out of my cell when i want yeah literally but i thought i was being smart going to like um, open prison out of the way do you know what I mean so when I've gone there now it was a bit of a madness for me and I had a few like issues with myself mm. in there do you know what I'm saying right so then but then after everything started moving I started getting like my day releases and my home leaves and all that it started getting a bit better do you understand yeah. what I'm saying and from then it's like when I just focused on me for when I get out yeah literally cause that's the point that you get to yeah. it, where you're thinking what am I going to do so you're, when you come out you're not thinking from then you've already got that plan yeah, set yeah, in yeah. your head yeah. what was it like first day out first day out was madness because it's like I had a bit of dough mm. so I started doing like some warehouse work while I was in open prison mm. so I was saving up my money and whatever else to put down for a deposit in a house and all them kind of things but then that's like again the conversation was having before yeah you're not told about credit scores and all them kind of things. I've got all my qualifications. I'm thinking I can go to a gym and do this and do that. But it's like nothing was working out. It was a bit of a madness for me. And I had a few like issues with myself mm. in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So then, but then after everything started moving, I started getting like my day releases and my home leaves and all that. It started getting a bit better. Do you understand what I'm saying? And from then, it's like when I just focused on me for when I get out yeah literally cause that's the point that you get to yeah. it, where you're thinking what am I going to do so you're, when you come out you're not thinking from then you've already got that plan yeah, set yeah, in yeah. your head yeah. what was it like first day out first day out was madness because it's like I had a bit of dough mm. so I started doing like some warehouse work while I was in open prison mm. so I was saving up my money and whatever else to 
put down for a deposit in a house and all them kind of things. But then that, like again, the conversation we was having before. Yeah. You're not told about credit scores and all them kind of things. I've got all my qualifications. I'm thinking I can go to a gym and do this and do that. But it's like nothing was working out. Mm. Nothing was working out. So like 2019, November, I come out of jail. And I got my first job in July 2020. But at first it was like, I was being too honest. I was being open and honest. Like I'm going to people saying, look, I've just come out of jail. I've just done this. I've just done that. And rare, rare, rare. I met, cause like I got my um, level three personal trainer while I was in. Mm-hmm. So the week before I got out, I got my missus to contact gyms and that. Then she met this guy from um, Heroes, Heroes Fitness in Stockport. I like to shout him out, Lee Wardle. He was the only person that gave me a chance. So I've come out on the Monday. Mm. I had a sit down with him on the Thursday. And then he said to me, look, listen, I, I was opening on this with him. And he says, yeah, listen, you can use my facility whenever you want. But all you have to do is build your client base. So when you build your client base, you can come and rent my space. I'm not going to give you clients. I just rent my space to you. Mm-hmm. And he's a man till this day. Like I'm still in contact with him. So anything I need, like in that kind of sense, like my man has my back. So he was the only person that from beginning till now. He's got you. Yeah, he, he had my back 100%. Yeah, chance. everyone else was just shutting the door in my face, shutting the door in my face. So then it got to like, say June 2020. And I started applying for jobs. And that's when I started lying. Like, mm. rah, nah. Man ain't got no criminal conviction or nothing. I started doing warehouse work, but mm. it's through an agency. Mm. So it's just like, they're kind of robbing me in it. The robbing, so you're on like eight pounds seventy two an hour. Way yeah, more yeah, than yeah. That. yeah. And I'm putting in mad work. I'm doing overtime because I'm trying to build up my dough to get. Because I was homeless, you know. From oh, for a, real? Yeah, from I come out in um, November 2019, it's like I was homeless, so I lived in a ho- um, hostel for three months. Then I went into an apartment. Then the COVID thing hit. Lost that I had to live with my sister and all these kind of things. So I was homeless for time until right. September this year. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got myself a um, council flat and all them kind of things. But then in the midst of all that, I've ended up looking on Indeed and seeing this job with St. Giles's Trust. Yeah, that's what you're saying to me. So yeah. you're going to be going to that tomorrow as well, right? Yeah. No, I went yesterday. Oh, you went yesterday? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time span of yeah, the yeah, time yeah, frame. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, yeah, yeah. so you went for it. I went, I went yesterday. So now I've started doing that and Certified, yeah, man. Like it's what the first job I've applied for and I've not had to lie, told them everything. And that's kind of what my past is what got, is what got me the job. That's what I was going to say. Like sometimes people need to hear it from people like you, fam. Mm. I'll be honest to you. There's no point of them hearing it from a teacher. Just like yeah. when you was in school, bro, you was not trying to hear it yeah, from yeah, teachers. Yeah. Like it would take for someone with some form of credibility for you to take mm. it serious. Yeah, hundred percent. Cause that's, that's the approach I come on now. Like with my videos on Insta and all them kind of things. That's the approach I come on now. It's like, if I'm talking to a youth and saying like, rah, don't do this and don't do that, and they're telling me why, look at me, bro. Mm. Like, hear my story, listen to me speak, see the pain in my eyes. You understand mm. what I'm saying? This is why you shouldn't do it because you don't want to have to live with this. You know, And it's not, it's not just about you can't get a job and you can't do this. It's the mental health side of it, PTSD and all them. I had a man run upon me and um, I was walking through Stockport a man's run upon me like, yo, are you KPB? Yeah, and I'm like, instant. Yeah, and I'm like, right, what? who's that? Who's that? Mm. And he's like, is it, is it? So I'm saying, yeah, he's going, yeah, yeah, safe, G, safe. And then, so I'm saying, right, what's up, man? What's going on? And he's run off. Mm. So then I'm, now I'm on, I'm on 10. I'm like, right, what's going on? I'm thinking he's going to call whoever and whatever. So I'm on 10. Then the next day he's reached out to me on Insta, said, right, I seen you yesterday. Like, I've been watching your videos and that and red, mm. but it's like, that mental health side of it now it's like I was on 10 so I'm thinking rah what's going on you understand what I'm saying but it's like if you if you would have stopped from that 13 year old driving cars and you wasn't fascinated by the lifestyle you wouldn't have to live with these things today do you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying anxiety PTSD all them kind of things nah real rap it's true because like one thing I have seen which is the truth like people on road are actually facing real trauma like yeah, just 100%. like war yeah. people like you've been shot you've had been shot at you've done whatever so Naturally speaking, there's no difference, but you look like people don't take the roads as serious. They don't realize yeah. there's genuine trauma behind yeah. that shit. Like man say, it goes untreated. Yeah, like war veterans, 
I like to say we're ghetto veterans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like we made it through. Like mm. we went through all that madness and then we've made it out the other side. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And now at the point where we're at today, so it's like now I'm trying to rebuild everything. Mm -hmm. So what the same thing, what like an 18 year old's going through now that's done school, done college, done uni yeah, and all them kind of things. I'm having to start from that point. Now it's 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Do you get what 31 now? Do you get what I'm saying? Where I've just wasted the full 13 years of my life from that point, from like 18 till now. With bullshit, yeah, that's you get what, what I'm is. saying? Because you're bro. gonna have to do it. Let's let's have it right in it. You're gonna have to do it. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Because when you're 40, by the time you're 40, everyone's got the same plan. Yeah, you got to sat down with your wife, your kids, have a family. Yeah, your house. mortgage yeah. and all them kind of things. You can't get these things with no credit file. It's true. You can't get these things without someone has to vouch for you. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like man can't start shouting screws. Yo, yo, can can I use you for a reference or a guarantor? Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? No one's gonna want to touch you, so we have to get to that point. Whether you want to waste all your life and then start trying to do it when you're 30, you're still gonna have to do it. You're still gonna have so to do better. it. You just get on it as soon or as you can. Just slum it out. Mm. Do you know what I'm right, saying? No one's really trying to do that. No one's trying to do that. Every everybody wants to make it. Ah, oh, definitely. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you're gonna have to do it at some point. So this is what I'm trying to push to these youths from now. Rather than wait until you're 30, 31, 35, and then you've got like five years to reach that 40 year old mark when you want to start getting a mortgage and all these kind of things, mm. do it from now, bro. Yeah, Forget the road cool. thing. Yeah, the road thing's dead. It's dead, bro. Mm. Like, the amount of stuff that come with it, it's not worth it. You understand mm. what I'm saying? It's like even, even, like, even you reaching out to me saying, like, oh, I want to get you on the fit. And you understand what I'm saying now? I'm doing all the background check on you. I'm looking on your Insta like, yo, all right, let's see if he follows my, oh, he don't follow. Yeah, he's got no ties. Yeah, yeah, he's cool. He's, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You shouldn't have to like- Naturally speaking, yeah, that's how you feel. That's you're right, reaching though. out to me because you're saying like, bro, I want to get you on my platform. So mm. you're trying to help me. Yeah. But then the psychology side of it, I'm looking at it like, rah, so what, what, nah, I remember one time, yeah, I must have had beef with a man. Like, and You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, he could be my man. You understand what I'm saying, bro? It's like, why go through all that? Why yeah, have to put your side? There's genuine people out there that want to help you. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Nah, facts. 100%, bro. 100%. It's a mad story still, but it's good that you've seen the other side of it. A lot of people didn't. I'm sure there's probably people still even in jail for some shit mm. back then. And you're definitely on the right path now as well. And that's the main thing. You just got to keep your head focused, which I'm sure you are. Yeah. I'm sure you're focused. And yeah, just stay out of the way. Yeah, man. 100%. Way do, Another man. thing I would like to say, yeah. Go on. I know a lot of people think the same as man, but... Man aren't willing to stand up and be counted. Mm. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Like, man ain't willing to stand up and say, nah, it's bullshit. Yeah. Because, like I said, we didn't go to school. We didn't go to college. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I learned how to speak through having to talk for my life. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Because when I'm in jail and I'm having to, remember, I have to go through parole. Mm -hmm. So, when I'm on these parole boards, I have to convince two or three people that I've changed. So, mm -hmm. really, I'm talking for my life. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, I've learned that skill through jail. So now I've come out. So I'm doing that same thing again. But some people, they don't have that same yeah. skill. Do you get what I'm saying? To so express like, themselves kind of Yeah, thing. of course. So it's like, let, let's just stick to what we know in it. Yeah, my man's chatting shit. My man's, oh, my man's soft. And oh, yeah, he's got... But nah, man. Like, hear what man's saying. If, if, if you're on this wave, let's ride the wave together. You understand what I'm saying, bro? It's like, look at this now. Mm. You've got a platform. Mm -hmm. you've invited me to your platform so now we're helping let's help each other bro right. you understand what I'm saying let's show other people that we can do this mm. do you understand what I'm saying like then when the youths are seeing like people like us now it's like rah them, you understand what I'm saying oh it, definitely it's a good look sometimes it's unfortunate you had to go through that to be a good look but yeah. yo at least if you can people looking at this I can't see how you can look at this and think yeah this is yeah. it let me do that fam because you have to face 12 years behind. Yeah. I would rather me go through what I went through to give me the, the life skills and the knowledge to educate you mm. rather than having to watch other people go through it. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. I'd rather like take that. I'd rather make that sacrifice myself. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? No, I respect and it, bro. That's the movement, bro. 100% man Only way forward Honestly right From now Only way is forward and I see you definitely yeah. Being in big places In the next 10 years Same, man. This next decade You're gonna be out here Doing your thing And yeah now You're just gonna be On to bigger and better stuff Without a doubt bro It's a blessing honestly To see you out here mm. 
doing stuff and especially as I said I've seen you from when you didn't have a job yeah 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 and you didn't have anything really yeah. going on like that to now yeah, see yeah. that you're focused and yeah, shit yeah. is going well it's amazing bro it's a blessing yeah, real talk oh, it's yeah, a real yeah. blessing man 100% but nah it's been great having you on I'm sure we'll get you on probably in the next 6 months yeah. a year yeah, yeah, yeah. get a little catch up um, yeah. tie over on your stuff as well yeah nah K to PT on Instagram K to PT 19 on Instagram True Blue Lifestyle on Instagram and YouTube subscribe to my YouTube channel follow me on Insta that'll be in the description all yeah that stuff Lima's gonna in put in the description and all that man yeah man just shout me Anyone that's out there thinking about anything or even if you want to ask man a question, shout man. I answered all my DMs. I answered all my DMs. That's it. That's it, guys. You heard it here. Definitely, man. It's been Devontae slash Rebels. K to PT, Kevin Proverbs. That's it, man. I hope you lot got some. That was an amazing story, honestly, because it just goes to show how shit can go from one extreme to the other and where it all leads to. I, I don't mm. think anyone's ever been on the road and had a positive ending yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. Um, yeah. Whether it's losing other people go in jail it's just there's no positives fam yeah, for real for real bro for real man but yeah we're out anyway peace yeah. bless